When she walked into the funeral home, she had no idea she was at her own funeral. Gopher Zero recently launched a striking campaign aimed at making people think twice about how they behave while driving. In the campaign, several people who think they're going out with their friends actually end up with quite a shock. They're actually going to a funeral. In the video clip, the people are led into a funeral and look inside the coffin only to see themselves. Naturally, they're confused and angry by what's happening. Their confusion is quickly replaced by horror as they notice the truth about the funeral. It's their own funeral. Once they realize that the funeral they're attending is their own, they look around at the mourners. As it turns out, it's their own family and friends, not actors, sitting there mourning their death. This naturally shakes them to the core. That's when they discover the truth. The campaign is intended to scare these people into changing their dangerous driving practices by forcing these people to face the aftermath of their death. They get to see the effect their death has on the people closest to them. Hopefully, these people will think twice about speeding in the future. The creators of the campaign commented on the idea behind the stunt. Virtually no one feels it's dangerous to drive a few kilometers an hour faster than the maximum speed limit. However, even this slight speeding kills and injures hundreds of people every year. However, that's not all. We tend to ignore the many lives of people close to us that are devastated as well. To slow down their loved ones before it's too late, people in this film set up an unusual wake-up call. They invited their speeding friend or family member to their own funeral. The emotional reality check was caught on hidden camera. While the Go For Zero campaign may be staged, the idea of walking into your own funeral might actually not be as far-fetched as you think. That's because one woman from Melbourne, Australia did just that. She had a slightly different reason for attending her own funeral, however. Noella Rocundo had flown from her home in Melbourne to Burundi to attend her stepmother's funeral with her husband. While there, however, she underwent a truly harrowing experience that is most people's worst nightmare. However, the truth of the situation was even more terrifying. After attending the funeral, Noella retired to her hotel room to take a nap after the stress of the day. While there, her husband phoned her and suggested that she get some fresh air. Noella thought that it might be a good idea and stepped outside. That's when she was confronted by a man with a gun. The man warned her not to scream before he bundled her into a car and drove her away. After almost an hour, she was finally pulled out of the car and dragged into an empty building where she was tied to a chair. That's when she discovered what was really going on. One of the men asked her what she had done to make someone want to kill her. When she asked them what they meant, they told her that they had been hired to kill her. She didn't believe them until they said that Belenga had sent them. Belenga was her husband's name. They were lying and she told them so, but they merely laughed. You're a fool, they told her. There was a sound of a dial tone and a male voice coming through a speakerphone. It was her husband's voice. Kill her, he said. Rakundo had met her husband 11 years earlier, right after she arrived in Australia from Burundi, according to the BBC. He was a recent refugee from the Democratic Republic of Congo, and they had the same social worker at their resettlement agency that helped them get on their feet. Since Kalala already knew English, their social worker often recruited him to translate for Rakundo, who spoke Swahili. They fell in love, moved in together in the Melbourne suburb of Kings Park, and had three children. Rukundo also had five kids from a previous relationship. She learned more about her husband's past. They'd fled a rebel army that had ransacked his village, killing his wife and young son. She also learned more about his character. I knew he was a violent man, Rukundo told the BBC, but I didn't believe he can kill me. But it appeared he could. Rukundo came to the strange building somewhere near Bajambura. The kidnappers were still there, she told ABC. However, the killers had a secret.